Okay, I think we're going to try to begin. We're under a short time frame, but we only have uh, two items on today's agenda, so this should be a very short um, hearing. I think if the sergeants, we will begin as a subcommittee, but if the sergeants could call the members so that we can establish a quorum uh, as soon as possible, that would be great, but we will begin um, as a subcommittee and hear um, SB 130 by Senator Denham. So please proceed, welcome. with Richmond Unified. <laughs> that it's the state's responsibility to address uh, school districts' fiscal crises. Uh, I took uh, amendments on April 13, which will conform SB 130 to uh, 2004 language from uh, AB 2756, Dousersville, uh, that established the best process for state oversight. I uh, took, also took amendments to May 6th, uh, uh, which the Education Committee in the Senate had called for, uh, which allowed for an initial $5 million appropriation from the general fund uh, and would have the direct, uh, the district go directly to the I-Bank for the rest, uh, for the other $8 million. The entire $13 million <laughs> would be financed by the district with the I-Bank over 20 years. Uh, this was the financing used by Compton in 2006. Uh, the disbursement of funds would not happen all at once. Rather, smaller amounts would be apportioned uh, to the district as deemed necessary by the state administrator and the fiscal crisis management assistance team uh, for specific purposes. Uh, this bill has uh, support from all the stakeholders, no opposition, and no no votes. Thank you, Senator. Uh, we do have a quorum now, so before we proceed, we will... Um, the roll, please. M Madam Secretary. Brownlee? Present. Miss Sandy? Present. Amiano? Morambula? Present. Buchanan? Carter? Ng? Garrick? Miller? Solorio? Torlickson? We've got six. Great. We have now have established a quorum, and so witnesses and support. I guess I'll go first. Estelle Lemieux with the California Teachers Association. These are very unfortunate uh, circumstances. We wholeheartedly support uh, this measure, and the quicker we can get it out and to the governor's desk to have it signed, the better it is for everybody in that community, because right now everyone is suffering, not just the employees, but the community as well, seeing that their district is, is, is you know, just holding on very fragilely. So uh, we're asking that everyone here today give us a, a and I vote on this measure. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Montero. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, Joel Montero, Fiscal Crisis Management Assistance Team. We've done the analysis, uh, fiscal analysis on this bill and for this district. We believe it to be correct and accurate and support the measure. Thank you. Rory Livingston, Assistant Superintendent for Business, King City Joint Union High School, recommends supporting the bill. It is needed. Thank you. Tom Michelson, Superintendent uh, of the School District. Um, support the bill would like to go on record as saying that the administrations currently in place are not the ones that are uh, were there when the initial issues that came forth but have been working very diligently and very difficult hard to to solve this situation as well we've taken steps at budget advisory committees as well as uh, cutting everything that we possibly can support the bill as quickly as possible thank you assembly member Cabrero, welcome Thank you very and much, Madam Chair. And I see that you are a co-author of the bill, and are you here to testify? Uh, yes, I am here in support of the bill, and, and please ask your consideration. Um, the King City High School is located, the King City School District is located in uh, South Monterey County, and um, I am co-author of the bill and would respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you very much. Um, any witnesses in opposition to the bill? Seeing none, um, questions? Mr. Garrick. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, a couple questions. First, I will be supporting the bill, um, but uh, I have uh, two or three concerns I'd like uh, answered. Uh, one is what uh, rate of interest will the $5 million be paid at and who and how will it be paid? This bill is a little bit unique related to um, emergency appropriations in that it's in two pieces. Initial $5 million from the Treasury uh, that would be reimbursed by sale of bonds by the Infrastructure Bank at a later point in time. The initial $5 million interest rate is set um, at the pooled interest rate that the state earns for their investments. And so for that period of time that the district draws that first $5 million, they would pay that particular interest rate. The interest rate relative to the, the emergency appropriation when the $13 million worth of bonds are sold, and by the way, they're only sold as needed, and so it's not a block grant. They don't get all the money at once, but as, that, as those bonds are sold, the interest rate paid by the district as it um, makes the first draw to first reimburse the state's general fund and then provide cash flow for the district is pegged at the market whatever the market is relative to the sale of those bonds by the infrastructure bank, bank, that's the interest rate that's charged to the district. What, what is the present rate of interest that the fund is paying for its initial, initial amount, the five million? I, I don't, know the, I don't know the answer to that question, Jerry, do you? Yeah, I know that the pooled interest rate's normally between one and two. Okay. Uh, the amount charged by the iBank on prior loans has been in the, f the f three to four and a half area. Great, thank you. Uh, the second question I have relates to um, working, the workout, shall we say, the working out of this hole, and um, how long do you anticipate to turn the situation around in terms of where we have the expenses exceeding the revenues? Well, in, in terms of recovery, part of the process is that the, the district and the county office and the new state administrator, when that person is assigned, have to create a fiscal recovery plan and that recovery plan looks forward to try to determine when this, the district stops deficit, three things, stops deficit spending, uh, is able to have um, a fund balance that is trending positive and is able to maintain the reserve for economic uncertainty. And so depending upon where we are economically uh, in California, and as you all know, that's in flux at this particular time, we're thinking that by the time the district's able to achieve those three goals, we're probably three to five years down the road. And when will that plan be um, presented and will we be um, receiving a copy? You, you will. That, that plan, uh, as per SB 130 and, and the education code, uh, must be created and developed, I believe it's within the first six months of the assignment of the state administrator. That's actually their first job. And the, you, yes, you do receive a copy of that. Within that plan, does it identify all of the bargaining units and when their contracts are up? It does, yes. It also, because it includes a multi-year projection, a financial multi-year projection. Great. Thank you for that. I'd, um, Madam Chair, I'd like to request that w the committee, both sides, um, receive a copy of that and that it's distributed to the members. I think that's a matter of course, but I think um, by stating it for the public record as an important Thank you. Um, uh, thing to do. Thank you for the courtesy. Yes. I'm pleased to support it this otherwise. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garrick. Uh, Ms. Carter. Um, will your district be receiving uh, federal stimulus money? But, and, yeah. has, and how has that helped you? Let me refer that to the district staff, either Tom or Roy. Yes, we have received uh, money from the stimulus. Uh, it, what it has done is actually lessened the depth of the hole for the current year. We ran out of cash in March. We are anticipating um, with, a relation, with a, an agreement we have with Monterey County to utilize some funding. We had anticipate by June 30th to use three and a half million dollars. Uh, we anticipate at this time to only need to use two and a half million dollars because of the federal bailout funds. So um, it doesn't make the district whole. It just makes the whole, the financial difficulty much smaller, but not that much smaller. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Arambulov. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Senator and Assembly Member, can, can you describe, you know, I, I've, I've read the, the report, the analysis, 
But can you describe what the origin of the problem was and, and um, provide assurances that what caused it has been fixed or is in the process of being fixed? I note, for example, West Fresno is one of the schools in, in, uh, that has received a bailout, I, I, and I'm familiar with it in my district. And that was largely due to some political instability on the board, and they're not making some wise decisions. Um, I'm wondering if the circumstances that led to the district being in this condition um, uh, are better, or do you know what I mean? It, what caused the problem, and is this something that uh, uh, has been resolved or is likely to be resolved? Um, <coughs> not unlike your uh, your district of West Fresno or Oakland, a lot of the, uh, the similar problems that exist here today uh, have not been fixed yet, uh, but we expect will be fixed with a state takeover. Uh, obviously, uh, as it has happened in your district, this is very, very unfortunate. I would say the, the difference in this scenario is that uh, with the language that we've taken already with the 2004, um, amending it to the 2004, uh, uh, the oversight process that we put in place, uh, I think that that will help to rectify the problem. But the problem started with, I mean, it's, it has to do with salary, benefits, uh, declining enrollment, uh, a PERB decision in 2000 that uh, have continued deficit spending year after year after year until the point where not only is the district bankrupt, but completely out of money and unable to function. Borrowed money from the, the county uh, already, and the county can't afford to let the school district borrow any more money. So this is not uh, um, you know, the general fund writing uh, any type of, of giveaway. This is actually just the legislature giving authorization for a school district to go to the I-Bank to borrow the money over 20 years and uh, have the state oversight be able to go in and, and actually restructure how the district is run. Okay. And, and I, I will support the measure today because the last thing I want is for the schools to close and uh, the staff and the teachers to suffer. It, but I'm not familiar with the region. Is there uh, a possibility of consolidation with an adjoining school district or some modification of the boundaries uh, to uh, you know, if, if it's a small district, Actually, and if it's I not feasible, I probably could let the perfect. school district uh, uh, explain. I think I think you said it absolutely correct correctly, Assembly Member Arambula. Um, it's been some political decisions that were not wise, um, and that got them in into this into this fix. The um, the, I, the high school district has actually had a split. Um, King City um, uh, High School District originally included students from Greenfield that were bused in. They had a split and Greenfield now has their own high school and a separate um, um, governing entity. It's, no, actually, no, they're, they're still part of the same, the same, um, the same governance, but, but you do have administration that shared between the elementary school district and the high school district. And so there are some economies of scale that, are, that have been explored that they're working uh, very diligently on. Uh, but but the, the real issue is, um, is that they end up, it ended up with a contract that they could not afford. And quite frankly, the teachers are the highest paid in the state. And so that is a problem that has to be resolved. And I think with the state oversight, some of the balance will, will be applied. Um, it, it'll be difficult. Um, there will ha some be some choices that will have to be made, uh, but um, but in arriving at this solution, uh, it, there it does require state oversight in order to get there. Assemblymember Rambola, uh, just a, a point of uh, clarification: Senator Denham has included in this bill language that requires the district to uh, at least review and consider consolidation or unification in the region, and so that study would be. Uh, likely begin at the beginning of the process of state administration and would proceed until they come to some conclusion of whether or not it makes sense. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Amiano. Yeah, just a couple of things. I, 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 uh, these are always very painful, and uh, actually I think it's, it's kind of sad. So, um, and I think there's a collective blame here and that the unions sh should not be singled out. I think there it appears to me uh, and I am fam familiar with FICMAT that there w was some malfeasance, p possibly even corruption here. Um, 
this is in a, this is what we call a Hail Mary. I hope people will learn from this. It's good that the uh, uh, issue that you address will be on the table. I think that that needs to happen. Uh, and I don't want to uh, exculpate, if that's a word, uh, anybody from the accountability that they had and the betrayal of our children that they participated in. But, you know, we have to look at Prop 13. We have to look at the bigger picture of why uh, people start to nibble at each other's uh, um, uh, venues. Uh, you know, what forces people uh, to be uh, the, them against us. And definitely the, there is a larger context here about how schools are funded. Uh, I do have a question about the, um, uh, you, you mentioned surplus property. Um, is there enough to really make it worth it in, in today's market? And have you considered leasing as opposed to selling? I think virtually the district does not have surplus property. Because no, okay. I saw it in there. It, it only has two high schools, and, and they're fully developed and in use. Okay. And I, I would also imagine, I'm just second guessing that when uh, other than uh, the financials are looked at, uh, the community involvement, I don't, uh, it seems like the, demogra the demographic is uh, uh, highly Hispanic. I didn't know what, uh, it doesn't say here what the socioeconomic issues are, but I'm just going to, put myself out there and say, you know, sometimes communities cannot be involved or they are deliberately excluded. And that the more community involvement in this process, I, I, I think the better, because I think that's where your transparency and where your accountability comes from. And I, I will support this. Thank you, Mr. Amiano. Mr. Ng. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I had a question about the um, uh, establishing the emergency loan as a straight line loan and the loan as I see the analysis will be over 20 years with interest calculated at a rate earned by the state's pooled money investment account on the date these provisions are enacted. And my understanding is that the state's pooled money, and uh, I was, my question was why are you tying the interest rate um, to that particular uh, account? Um, uh, as you know, um, the state's pooled money investment um, board um, had to, on December the 17th, warn that because of the state's budgetary uh, issue, um, could not borrow any more money because the markets were very nervous that we didn't have a budget at that point. And over $9 billion in projects uh, were threatened, infrastructure projects were threatened to be on hold. And this may not be, this may be apples and oranges, but I wanted to know the re the rationale behind that and also what is the current interest rate right now in that account and what you project it to be at the time that the uh, loan will be calculated. Um, the rationale for uh, utilizing PMIA as setting the interest rate on that initial $5 million uh, is because that particular allocation from the state's general fund is in, all, in essence a temporary allocation. And in the past, that's what the state has used to develop and pay an interest rate um, relative to the repayment of that principal as it moves forward to the district. In this case, um, that will be superseded by the sale of bonds by the infrastructure bank. And as those bonds are sold, are authorized and eventually sold, the proceeds from the sale of those bonds will, re will reimburse this initial $5 million from the um, state's general fund. But in the meantime, w while, while those dollars are outstanding at the general fund, they are, um, they are borrowed at the interest rate, the pooled money interest rate. That rate fluctuates generally between one and two percent. I don't know what it is today, um, but generally speaking, about one and a half percent. It's fairly low then. It's fairly low. The interest rate that the district will eventually pay is the interest rate negotiated based on market uh, from the infrastructure bank when they sell the bonds, and so it will be at a higher rate. Which is what do you anticipate it would well, be? Well, it, it ranges, again, just like anything else, but I would anticipate between 3 and 5 percent, somewhere in that range. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Solorio. Move Thank the you. bill.
Okay, the bill has been moved by Mr. Solorio and um, seconded by Mr. Nastande. And um, I just wanted to say I am supporting uh, the bill. I think it's, on, was there another comment? Oh, oh, go ahead, Ms. Buchanan. I just had one quick question. I, obviously, I support this, and I, you know, we, we have to do all we can to make sure our schools can run as smoothly as possible because we're, we're there for the kids. But, um, and I understand that you're getting a short-term $5 million loan that's going to be replaced through infrastructure financing of $13 million. But it refers to lease financing. Are, is this being secured by property or something? I, it's, it's, I'm just trying to figure out because it's, it's not obviously a not it's not a typical kind of uh, revenue anticipation or whatever. Yeah. So what? Infrastructure bank loans are secured by real property, okay. and so they're referred to technically in the code as lease purchase. Okay. So in essence, what you're doing is you're using your mm -hmm. the proper the high schools as collateral. Secured, collateral. Okay. That's all. It works. Okay, uh, thank you. There's been a motion and a second, and again, I, I am uh, in strong support of the bill. This is a difficult uh, bill um, because we understand the issues here. I mean, we you don't want to shut down schools for students. That's critically important. On the other hand, losing you know local control and so forth for the moment is also very is also very difficult. I certainly hope. Um, that we don't see more bills like this, but it's it's potentially likely that we we could, um, and um, I just hope that the since the representatives of the district are here, and I know that you will, will work as diligently as possible um, with the administrator and with FICMAC so that we can uh, get this district uh, back to solvency and back to uh, governing local governance and local control. And um, with that, I will ask the secretary to call the roll. Brownlee. Aye. Brownlee, aye. Nastandi? Aye. Nastandi, aye. Amiano? Aye. Amiano, aye. Arambula? Aye. Arambula, aye. Buchanan? Aye. Buchanan, aye. Carter? Aye. Carter, aye. Ng? Aye. Ng, aye. Garrick? Aye. Garrick, aye. Miller? No. Miller, no. Solorio? Aye. Solorio, aye. Torlakson? Aye. Torlakson, aye. Ten to one. Ten votes. Your bill is out. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Our Thank next you. bill is SB 520 by... Welcome, Senator. Hello. Hello. So nice to see you, chairing nice to see you too. education Thank you committee. very much. Uh, first of all, I, um, uh, Assemblymember Brown, I'd like to thank you personally and your staff for working you know, so closely with myself and my staff. Greatly appreciated. And I'd like to start by accepting the committee's suggested amendments. Thank you. Uh, members, um, Senate Bill 520 is part of a national movement to promote community service for young people and seeks to establish statewide guidelines for the issuance of high school graduation credit to students who perform community service outside of school hours, sort of a service learning kind of class. Following President Obama's national call to service, as well as even our own governors and Maria Shriver's involvement and commitment to public service, this bill seeks to facilitate and encourage community service uh, for California's youth. I want to start out by saying that this is a voluntary program. School districts can implement it if they'd like to, setting a minimum baseline in standards of hours so that it's sort of reflective of the kind of commitment you'd have in a class. It gives full authority to the school board and the local people to decide if they want to implement it, what would be the academic component, if any, of it. It sets a baseline of about 60 hours or greater. Uh, it sends a message that uh, this is an important concept in that getting the uh, students out into the community provides not only some rich um, benefits of, of them engaging the community and realizing they can make a difference, but allows them to, to possibly um, figure out a career path in, in the future. And I think that's critically important. And it could be one of the more relevant courses that students have 
when they go through high school. Will this be a class that everyone wants to participate in? Probably not. A lot of students have a very full academic load. Will every high school be involved in this? Probably not, but for a few it makes sense. In my own district, uh, Oxnard High School District has implemented a very uh, s a similar program to this. Didn't know about it until after I introduced this bill. And the teachers there, as well as the students and the administrators and the entire school board are very supportive of the program. They've worked it out. So it's broad flexibility, sends a message that career pathways or uh, service learning is important. I think it's very relevant to the uh, students today to have this as an option, providing the school board decides it's a priority in their district. The school board will decide which nonprofits or entities would provide that accountability. For example, in Oxnard, um, United Way is the program that would provide not only the accountability and making sure they actually participate in the hours and develop that meaningful experience, but we've heard um, Assemblymember Brownlee from Food Share and some other very worthwhile nonprofits. So I think this is um, a bill uh, that is go moving in the right direction, sends a signal that this is an option for school districts to consider and establishes that sort of baseline so it's equivalent to what we consider an elective class. Students could not take more than two semesters of this during their four-year course of study, and I'd appreciate your support. Thank you, Senator. Um, witnesses in support. Hi, my name is Terry Munger, and I'm running Mayor Kevin Johnson's Volunteer Sacramento program. And I'm uh, honored to be here today, so thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, Mayor Kevin Johnson supports Senate Bill 520. As the founder of Sacramento's St. Hope Public Schools in 1989, Mayor Johnson knows firsthand the impact of community service and, and what it does, um, an impact it has on students, as well as the benefit community service has on nonprofit organizations. Community service and other forms of community engagement provide a variety of unique benefits to students, communities, and the organizations where students volunteer. Research has shown that students' learning, personal skills, and professional development increase when students invest more of their out-of-class time and energy in educational, purposeful activities such as community service. Also, the community gains resources and services that would otherwise be unavailable. In terms of career growth, many service activities provide students with the opportunity to explore possible careers, experience the real world of their chosen career field, develop professional skills and contacts, build their resume, and put into practice the information they have learned in academic settings. With every community service activity or project comes the explicit or implicit goal of improving the lives of individuals in our community. Community service efforts are designed to help individuals and our groups deal with various issues confronting our society. For every act of service, there is a ripple effect that ultimately results in some degree of benefit to the entire community. Students will gain firsthand knowledge of issues affecting their own community and work hands-on to support these issues and those impacted. Compassion oftentimes comes from firsthand knowledge. Nonprofit agencies and government programs generally deal with limited budgets and exceptionally high workloads. Student volunteers can make significant contributions to these agencies in their attempt to deal with the complex and growing needs of society. Mayor Johnson's 2009 Volunteer Sacramento Initiative is asking each citizen in the greater Sacramento region to give 10 hours of community service this year. Students, families, citizens working together to give back to our community will result in a better Sacramento. The mayor's goal of Sacramento citizens volunteering 500,000 hours and giving 500,000 service hours in 09 will only be reached if students engage. Excuse As me, you know, we have a, I'm sorry, but we have a sort of a three minute rule. Um, so it, uh, we w uh, appreciate your testimony, but if you could wrap it up and conclude. You're done? I am. Did I interrupt you right at the very I end? the last line. SB 520 is in direct support of this effort, offering school credit to those students willing to give a hand to their community will lay the foundation for a sustained, collaborative, and focused effort to, pr pr to promote service as a way of life. Thank you very much. Next was witness and support.
Good afternoon, my name is Heather Deering and I'm the Executive Director of the California Coalition for Youth here in Sacramento. Our mission is to improve and empower the lives of California's youth and we're a 30 year old grassroots nonprofit organization to ensure youth have access to programs, services and resources they need. Um, I'm here representing over 100 other youth serving nonprofits throughout the state um, and but specifically the way we're connected to SB 520 is through our California Youth Crisis Line. Um, the California Youth Crisis Line is a state funded program out of Calima. We answer over 15,000 calls a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week to youth and families who are in crisis and need connection to resources in their local communities. We we are heavily staffed with volunteers, specifically young volunteers, so that when youth call the line, they can connect to a peer and that they can feel comfortable sharing their life stories with them. And without youth volunteers, we would um, many calls would go answer, unanswered. Excuse me. Um, and without being repetitive, I think the, the most important thing about SB 520 for us is that um, it really does underscore positive youth development. And we, what we do know is when organizations and communities engage positive youth development, um, positive energy and the initiative of youth, um, good things can happen for both the youth and the community that, that they work in. Um, particularly, um, youth who engage in productive activities um, tend to um, not internalize negative stereotypes and they also tend to um, less frequently engage in risky behaviors and so in many ways this bill has more positive outcomes than just um, p positive um, graduation credits um, and specifically for us though if we didn't have volunteers we wouldn't be able to answer the thousands of calls that we get every year and so we're in strong support of SB 520 and I encourage your support as well. Thank you very much. Other witnesses in support? As the witnesses have come up, may I ask a question of the author? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, just checking, and you were good at the outset, and all the positive outcomes you've described are wonderful. How is this different than the guidelines that are, have existed before for outside work experience, where you're actually in a job site? And then for districts that already have a volunteer program, is there anything here that would result in a new mandate to them in terms of uh, meeting the criteria set out here? In other words, going the, forward, the one, you're, you're yeah, setting it's a, a going forward. The ones already in effect, they're they're it, not they're bound. not affected at right. all. And then the ones that would go forward and use this model to prove that they've met the different factors in in the bill, do and, they have to submit a report somewhere, or is it, well, is it just voluntary uh, compliance? I'll, the this particular bill sets forward uh, sort of a minimal hours, if you will, for compliance because it's. Uh, it's um, replacing a, an elective class right. that's available to students. The school board, um, there should be an academic component that's totally with up the school board. Is it a report? You know, is it a diary? Is it a program? And to set up probably um, under the um, jurisdiction of a, a classroom teacher um, how that accountability with that nonprofit, the school board will decide which nonprofits or which entities, hospitals, whatever it is in their district or ones that they want to have a relationship with who can provide that accountability. We wanted to make sure that this is not, and the school board will do this itself, this isn't someone uh, doing some kind of project for a neighbor or something and getting, you know, no, this is a sort of a, um, an organized, accountable, option instead of an elective program inside your community providing uh, benefit to that organization and hopefully a career pathway for the student. This sets a minimum sort of level of standard as far as hours, so it's roughly equivalent to a semester long class. And I didn't catch this when I was reviewing the legislation, but who is, is supposed to assure compliance or each district, again, under the local control rubric, all, all, has, has a, a all local control. Of the programs. All local control. It's um, as some um, school districts are starting on this pathway, I thought it was important to do two things. One, to emphasize, hey, this is a good option as an elective. Two, we better make sure that it's roughly equivalent to when an elective class might be, and then trusting, I'm, I'm a strong believer in local control, that the school district, since it's a voluntary program, will establish all that accountability structure and hopefully an academic complement to this, and that's the thrust of the bill. 
I know there's some more questions, but I want to go ahead and proceed with there are no more witnesses in, in support, witnesses in opposition. Good afternoon, Chair, Senator. Um, my name is Erica Hoffman. I'm with the California School Boards Association. And unfortunately, we do have an opposed position on this measure. Basically, schools already do this. School boards already have promoted service learning volunteer programs. They've made them graduation requirements within districts. They all look a little different. Many of them are one-year programs. Some go multiple years. What this bill basically does, in a way, almost supersedes what currently school school boards and school districts are allowed to do under the uh, current rubric we have. One of the concerns we have is by putting this in statute, even though it's a may, even though it's not a mandate, it still lays out, well then supposedly, potentially this is better than another idea that a school district would have in order to implement a service learning program that they feel would be more appropriate for their students. So that is the concern we have and that is our opposition to the bill in that this basically just puts into statute and takes away the local control that a school district already has in trying to implement this type of program. Thank you. Witnesses in opposition. Cecilia Mansfield on behalf of the California State PTA. Uh, I would just say that we appreciate the author's responsiveness to concerns that were raised by PTA after uh, May 12th uh, because of language that was taken uh, as amendments in Senate Ed. Uh, we understand that the author has agreed to some amendments that go part way in addressing our concerns, but we're not all assu uh, assured that uh, PTA would not potentially be excluded because of the language that uh, excludes political and advocacy organizations. Um, while law does not permit PTA to engage in partisan political activity. We are a child advocacy organization um, and many other nonprofits that are organized under 501c3 are also uh, constrained in the kinds of activities they can engage in. And uh, we're very concerned ab about um, whether potential still exists to exclude many nonprofits that uh, engage to some extent in what could be interpreted as uh, by someone as political or advocacy uh, activities. Uh, we are very much in support of the intent of the bill and certainly support community service conceptually, but we have this concern that keeps us uh, from, from being able to uh, support the bill at this time. Thank you. Isabel Garcia, California Teachers Association. With the committee amendments, which we think significantly improve the bill, we are withdrawing our opposition and going to a neutral position. We still, we, you know, our main concern was that we didn't want to have prescriptive provisions that would hamper the flexibility at the local level. Thank you very much. Ms. Buchanan. I have a few questions. Um, one is, what prohibits a district from doing this now? Uh, nothing prohibits a district from doing this now, but as it becomes more and more a, a popular concept that I think is very worthwhile, I think it's important in the ed code to s establish some minimum equivalent to what a semester class would be. Okay, and, and is there, it as staff, there's nothing in the ed code that requires any kind of hours or anything for um, a minimum equivalent for, or? In current uh, law, that's no. correct. Okay, no. so I, yeah, I know correct. when you're doing independent study, there is. Okay, um, the, the question was asked about this would impact service learning. Can you comment on that in terms of if a district has a service learning program where it's a, maybe it's a two-year program because one year builds on the other, does, does this then limit the um, credit that a district would be able to give a student for, for the two years? Or is, would you That's consider? certainly not my intent. intent. Right. This okay. is an out-of-school hours, um, elective kind of program, establishing a baseline, a voluntary one for school boards if they elect to go that approach, not to circumvent service learning, ROP, or right. any other kinds of programs right. that school and districts so are doing we, that we are probably articulated in the Ed Code. Right, okay, so I don't know if we need to check that. And the 501c3, the way I interpret that is 
any 501c3 is prohibited from political advocacy. So students would be able to, I have to assume, do their, um, would, would be allowed to do their um, community service work out of 501c3 with the amendment, right? Is, is, it, is there, yeah. I just want to clarify that. They should that. be able to do that, yeah. Right, because they're nonprofits. Nonprofits. Um, and part of the criteria, too, is the local school district would set up a, a list of which they would agree upon in terms of right. where students could. Everyone's do district this. is yeah. probably different um, and, and on what's you, available, what's close by, who can be accountable. Right. And then you mentioned in one of your responses that this was replacing elective classes. It, it, what, what you're really doing is allowing the district to add this as an elective class, aren't uh, you? One of the options is an elective class if they so choose. Okay, and then uh, two more yeah. questions. Sorry for the whole. Sorry. 60 hours, I mean, if someone takes, like in our school district, we had a 180-day school year. So one semester would be 90 days, and that would be, you know, 90 hours of math, science, history, whatever, and on top of that, students would have homework and other assignments, so. This is, this is a baseline minimum based on some, what school districts are doing now. So this is the minimum. Uh, other districts are going to be hopefully doing more than that. The idea is to be equivalent. Everyone has a different way of how they credit semesters and and so that is a minimum, not a requirement. Uh, academic components can certainly exceed that and the number of hours, the school board has full authority to do that. But shouldn't, shouldn't we know that this is roughly equivalent to? We have a... Um, what is the exact language that we worked on there? Oh, it's an amount that is equivalent to that of a one semester elective course in that district. Okay. And also it would be in an amount that may be equal to or greater than 60 hours per semester. And is there's also the written into the bill, I mean, I understand your questioning, right. but there's also written into the bill um, the requirements in terms of writing some kind of um, a, a report, you know, kind of, I mean, again, the local school district can develop that, but that there is some um, component piece with which students have to <coughs> summarize, gather, report on um, the enrichment that they've had through this um, volunteer I didn't read service. that as being required, is it? Did I read it wrong? Yes. I shall require a pupil to submit a report or other academic assignments as determined by the school district. Right, but it doesn't mean they're doing an extra, if in, in, this, in my example, it doesn't mean if they've done 60 hours of community service that that, that doesn't mean that they're gonna be doing the ad additional 30 hours worth of work, which would be equivalent to taking a, a it does that's correct, but there might be right. a, as you right. claimed, a homework assignment, right. you know, that, that. Right, well in the other courses, you're in school that number of hours and have homework on top of that. It says the governing board of a school district may elect to offer credit in an amount that is equivalent to that of a one semester elective course in that district. Right. I wanna make sure this bill has a thorough hearing, but we're also, um, members have been called back to the floor um, and um, so I don't want to get us in trouble with the speaker. And, and my last question returning to the floor. I, I, is my last yeah. question is, are there any kind of additional liability issues for school districts when students are off campus doing the service learning or whatever? I suppose the district, if was concerned about that, wouldn't participate in this voluntary program. Many school districts have classes off-site or you go to a different school to take the uh, early algebra class before your school starts. I mean. I'm sure there are liability issues. Yeah. We did not go into that because the bill's not how really addressing from, I, that I, particular I, issue. I just say I, I, I support what you're doing. I, I think I probably would have preferred the, the combined hours they use in service along with any coursework would be then equivalent to um, other, you know, other course requirements. But anyway, those are my only comments. Mr. Nestandi. Actually, my question was tucked in with one of Mr. Chandler's presentations. Uh, okay, any other questions from members? Sure. Really quickly, I think the trajectory is, is, is good because I think we do need to acknowledge a community service as part of a curriculum. Um, and I really appreciate the uh, author uh, taking the amendments uh, that she did, and uh, so I'll be supporting this. Thank you. 
Thank you. Would that be uh, a motion, Mr. Amiano? And seconded by Mr. Rambula. The motion is to pass as amended. Would the author like to close? Ask for your I vote because Secretary? you have something yeah. to get to. Secretary, we call the roll. Brownlee? Uh, uh, yeah, aye. <laughs> Brownlee, aye. Ms. Standy? No. Ms. Standy, no. Amiano? Aye. Amiano, aye. Arambula? Aye. Arambula, aye. Buchanan? Aye. Buchanan, aye. Carter? Aye. Carter, aye. Ng? Aye. Ng, aye. Garrick? No. Garrick, no. Miller? Miller, no. Solorio? Abstain. Solorio, abstain. Torlakson? Aye. Torlakson, aye. Out. Your bill is out. Yay. Thank you, Thank Senator. You. And uh, this meeting is adjourned.